Welcome to our Not A Show Show. I'm David Gold. Coming up, you'll hear a variety of stories, including some about Detroit, Whitey Bulger, and various sports. But starting us off is Brandon Noguera with a look at the recent Country Music Awards. On November 6th, the Country Music Awards drew the largest audience in over four years. The three-hour show drew in 16.6 million viewers to witness a night of some of the biggest country music stars. The 47th annual show helped ABC rank number one that night. The broadcast proved appealing to a wide audience consisting of adults, teens, and even children. Social media hubs were the hot spots of that night, especially Twitter. Twitter had 1.6 million tweets related to the CMAs. Altogether, the CMAs make it to the Top Country Awards show this year. Two problems on the government's healthcare website have been found. Management expert Jeff Seen says last Friday the two problems were glitches and slow performance. An overall contractor is addressing these problems, and Zine says the performance speed has improved 80%. He also says by the end of the month, the website will be free of these problems and work better. As Whitey Bulger was on trial, he couldn't even look at the families of his victims as they spoke. Families called him a coward, terrorist, psycho, Satan, and a rat while they had for opportunity to address him in court. They wouldn't even let him off the hook as they demanded his attention. A victim's son, Patrick Callahan, said to Bulger, You wouldn't even turn around and look at us, coward? Bulger chose not to speak in response to the families. Up next for Bulger is his sentencing hearing. Are you tired of getting the bad guy and want the one you can take home? Today I'm going to tell you how to get the good guy instead of the hound dog. This segment is about... What outfits will change the way others look at you? This is Girl Chain, and I'm your host, Allison Close. Here are tips for the tops you wear. You know those tops with the long, wide cut in the sleeves? You know how they show your bra? Put, put on a tank top underneath. Good guys aren't interested in your bra color or their design. Another thing, you do not need a top that shows too much cleavage. Let's keep the boys from looking like the like a cartoon wolf with the tongue down to the ground and their eyes popped out. About the bottoms you wear. Mini skirts need leggings with them at all times. Shorty shorts are a complete no. They leave no secrets with them. Also, don't wear anything with words on the butt. It's impractical and encourages guys to stare in the wrong place. Now for outfits. If you have a mini skirt, then you don't need a tight top. If you have a low cut top, then you do not need skinny jeans. Now you don't need to listen to me, but if you do, I can guarantee you will attract a better guy. This is Allison from Girl Chain signing off. Have a good day. No news this week would be complete without an update on Richie Incognito. Miami Dolphins offensive lineman was recently suspended indefinitely while the team conducts an investigation into possible bullying. The allegations come from Jonathan Martin, a second year player out of Stanford. Martin claims that over the last two years, Incognito has harassed him to the point where he no longer felt safe playing football in Miami. One incident alleges that Incognito extorted $15,000 for Martin to help fund a team trip to Las Vegas. While Incognito has publicly defended his position as a friend and role model, Martin has released limited information. He's expected to meet with a special investigator for the NFL and then Miami Dolphins owner Stephen Ross before presenting all of his evidence to the public. On Saturday at the TNA Garden, the Boston Bruins are facing the Toronto Maple Leafs. It was the first meeting between the teams since the thrilling Game 7 Eastern Conference quarterfinals back in May, where the Bruins came back from a three-goal deficit in the third period. Flash to the present. The Bruins didn't take any kind of comeback. They took care of business with a 3-2... 3-1 to one win. Power play goes by Zano Chara and Patrice Bergeron sealed the win. Seth Lepore, former Brattleboro resident, has been winning over the hearts of countless audiences across the country with the tour of his witty one-man show, Firecracker Bye Bye. Firecracker Bye Bye is Lepore's sweetly twisted love letter to his grandmother. Billed as a comic tearjerker about the best Italian grandmother ever, Lepore tells the tale of his spitfire, slightly crazy, non-stop talking, no editing kind of grandmother, and how she touched the lives of him and his family. Brattleboro audiences fell in love with Lepore's nimble shape-shifting characterizations and comically twisted skills of observation at the Hooker Dunham Theater last weekend. Keep an eye out for this rising star the next time he comes to town. I'm David Gold, and have a good night. 
On November 5th, the New York Knicks played the Charlotte Bobcats at Madison Square Garden. The Knicks center, Tyson Chandler, was injured halfway through the first quarter with a right knee injury and was out for the rest of the game. This is bad news for the Knicks because they still don't know the severity of the injury and how long he is going to be out. The Knicks need to find a way to win without Chandler and when he comes back, he will hopefully help the team to play well and continue winning. On November 10th, the New Orleans Saints faced the Dallas Cowboys. The Saints dominated throughout the entire game with a final score of 49 to 17. Quarterback of the New Orleans Saints, Drew Brees, threw for 392 yards and four touchdowns. The Saints also had a total of 292 rushing yards in the game to help them win the game and become 4-0 and zero at home this season. Let's go Saints. Left tackle Jonathan Martin believes he'll be playing football again. It just won't be with Miami. The Dolphins released a statement today saying that Martin would not be returning to the team this season. Martin says, quote, He's happy to be away and hated being picked on, close quote. Richie Incognito, offensive left guard, is considered to be one of the main antagonists to Martin. Incognito says when talking about his, his voicemail to Martin, which contains harsh language and vulgar comments, that that's just how he and Martin used to communicate. Incognito says, when words are put into context, I understand why a lot of people's eyebrows get raised, but people just don't know how Ma John and I used to communicate to one another. Incognito is believed to be the main antagonist, but according to Incognito, when asking about who supported Barton on the team the most, he says himself. With 40% of its streetlights broken and 78,000 abandoned buildings, the once proud and prosperous city of Detroit has been pushed to bankruptcy. But this has not discouraged Andy DeRossi. In an attempt to help transport students to after-school programs, DeRossi started his own small public trans transit system showing the struggling city what six old buses and a skilled graffiti artist can do. With newly implemented tracking technology, Diderosi's transit system continues to flourish with each bus transporting about 1,100 students monthly. Break out the ice scrapers and snow shovels because winter is here again. As many of you already know, early Tuesday morning, the Putney and Brattleboro areas received their first noticeable snowfall of the year. Although flurries have been seen before this snowfall, this was the first time folks actually woke up to snow covering the leaves and car windows. One landmark college student says, I guess I cannot deny the fact that winter is here once again. Thanks for watching Not A Show Show, brought to you by the Broadcast Journalism uh, Class at Landmark College. Good night.